Now we're going to look at list in more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the Erlang shell. And what we're going to do is start off with some simple examples and kind of go into more advanced topics on list. All right, so if I want to create a list, I can basically put anything I want into it. And it can even be a mixture of items. So for example, I can do one, two, three, four, period. There's a list. Or I can do something a little more complex where I have four or five, um, some string. I have an atom. Then I actually have something like this. And that's valid as well. Now there are several operations we can perform on lists. So for example, if I have this list, one, two, three, and I do this, then I have three, four. The outcome is going to be, it's, it's really set operations on these lists. And the outcome is going to be similar to the operation of a set. So let's see what this is. It's going to be a combination of these two lists. And we end up with this. So we have three in there twice and three gets added twice. It's not going to be an exclusion of items that are duplicates. So they'll just appear multiple times. Now let's try another list. So let's try A, B, C, and then we're going to do D, E. So this is with letters rather than just numbers. And we get the same kind of outcome here. And then also, if I had, let's say, D here, then we just get 2D. So it's just like we did with our numbers above. Now going the other way, we're going to do, instead of plus, we're going to do minus. So let's try A, B, C, minus, minus. We'll have D, E. And then notice the outcome here. So what this is doing is trying to subtract out the items on the right from the items on the left. And the D and E are not inside of ABC, so they never appear. It never really affects that list. There's not any impact. Now, if we start mixing items, so let's bring back A, B, C, and bring back and create, let's see, like a, a C, D, E. So we have C, D, E. Now there's going to be a difference. What we have here is C is inside of both lists. We know the D and the E are not going to appear whenever we process this. The A and the B will be there. So let's see what happens with the C. C is gone. So C is subtracted out because it's in our list on the right-hand side. And then D and E aren't there at all in the list on the left hand. So there's, there's no impact with that. So let's look at another example. We're going to bring back our ABC and then we're going to have a B. So what happens here? Well, we should now have on the left hand side, the A and the B disappear. And then the C just is there. And that's the only item. And that's what we get. We just get the C. And when we're working with these, they're processed from right to left. So if we want to see an example of how that works, we have ABC minus minus AB minus minus C. Okay, so we start with this C. And we look at what's on the left. There's an A and a B. So there's no impact. The end result of the processing of the AB and the C is we get an AB. All right, so now we have an AB. Then we have our list on the left, which is ABC. We know the A and the Bs will cancel out, and we're left with the C. So let's see what that is. We should just have a list with a C in it, and that's what we have. And we go back to, now that we're discussing the order of processing here, we know this doesn't do anything to A and B because there's no C, so we end up, well, we need a period. We just end up with A, B in that case. All right, so now we've seen a little bit of manipulation on these lists. What if we want to get a head and a tail? And so a head is going to be the first item in a list. And then in Erlang, the tail is everything after the first item. So 
it's not going to be just the last item it's everything after that first item and the way to do this is hd that's head this is a function so we have parentheses then inside of here whatever our list is going to be and we're going to have an abc list so now we should get an a back which is the head of that list so what about tell that's going to be a tl that's also a function and whatever the list is going to be inside of there so let's create a list and we're going to do again an abc add our terminator we get bc so everything after the first item appears for the tell now what about adding a new head so if we want to do something like that let's do my list and we'll have a b c all right so now we have that stored inside of my list all right so let's see now how do we add another head so i'm going to do another list equals this is going to be the list all right so we're going to add a a to the beginning of my list and what i'm going to do here is a pipe so that's going to be where the backslash key is and shift on that key and you get the pipe and then we're going to have my list terminate it and we have our new head in there aa followed by the tell abc so what we've done here with this aa pipe my list this is called a cons operator and that's how we're doing this appending of the list so let's do something a little different with this two variables here and I'm separating them by a pipe all right so here we're going to have another list just because it's got more items in it and let's see we have no match of right hand side so I wonder why that is well what we're doing is we're actually creating variables H and T remember variables need to start with capital letter so if I go back and change this to H T run it now we get the result we were actually looking for so what is this doing well if I go ahead and look at what is H H is AA what is T it's the tell so what I've done is actually created the head and tell for this list using this shorter hand notation so I didn't have to go out there and get each one manually with the HD function and the TL function so it's similar to what you might expect when you're working with tuples we have this H and this T they're assigned two values out of this another list so there's some implicit functionality that's going on right there all right we're going to next look at a little bit more operation working with the head and tell and then also how to create list nested inside of list so that you kind of get this recursion going on with your list